expect another more pupil to join us. So let us also invite our two speakers who is supporting us with the opening remarks for today's sessions. And we have uh, two different pupils here yeah, from AIPP and another one from the Ekta Parishad in India. And you will be surprised also that one of the another young leaders already with us, yes? Yeah? So please let me invite Mr. Kitisak Pratanakra Prajang Sri. I'm sorry for the pronunciation. So Kitisak is the current chairperson of the AIPP. He has worked to promote and advocate for indigenous people's rights since 1989. His main focus is on indigenous people's right to land and the resources. He has closely worked with indigenous people at local, national, regional, and international level on impact of protected areas to indigenous communities. So please welcome Mr. Kitisak with us, chairperson of AIPP. You. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Magu, uh, yeah, for the introduction. Well, uh, I just like to begin with the saying like, good afternoon, yeah, everyone. I believe all of us are in, in Asia, right? And yeah, it's my pleasure to meet everyone through this virtual event. Uh, yeah, I wish yeah, we could meet in person yeah, if the COVID-19 situation is uh, getting better, right? Yeah, and I hope yeah, next year we might have chance to meet each other, yeah at the uh, Asia Land Forum, yeah, the next meeting. Um, this year, the main theme of the uh, forum, securing land rights and sustainable development goals uh, is very important. Uh, as you know, yeah, land is very really crucial and central for everything. It's source of our food, shelter, firewood, uh, and wood for household construction and maintenance. Uh, site for animal raising in the community and source of medicine. It, it also source of our culture and identity. Uh, these ha uh, have accumulated into our life experiences, nature-based knowledge and transmit from generation to generation. And if land is taken away from us, it will devastate our life. Yeah, I just like to give you an example uh, that happening in, in Thailand. Uh, as you may know from the news, it's about the Kalim community at the Bangkloi yeah, in the west of Thailand. Uh, the Bangkloi Kalim people, they have existed and lived there peacefully for hundreds of years, practicing uh, rotational farming, collecting of non-timber forest products and hunting yeah, just for family uh, consumption. Um, in 1981, uh, the area where they live uh, was declared the Kangajan National Park. And in 1996, yeah, uh, all of them were relocated to the lower Bangkloi yeah, in the lower part yeah, of the National Park with the reason of the national security uh, they were promised allocation of land and uh, for farming and housing in the new settlement area, including life quality development in the new settlement area. Uh, however, many plots of land allocated to them are very poor. They could not use and farm it. So family, some family uh, also did not receive uh, that, uh, land distribution. Uh, so they could not live there, so decided to go up yeah, to their original homeland and farm uh, In 2011, yeah, they were evicted again. Yeah, similarly, yeah, when they moved down there, they haven't received any compensation or even the allocation of land yeah, to, to them for farming. Yeah. Some of them, uh, especially the youth, they also decided to migrate to the city yeah, to work there as a wage labor. However, in uh, 2020, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak, yeah, many of them could not uh, work there 
because uh, all the businesses are closed. Uh, so yeah, they were unemployed and returned back to the community. Uh, at the same time, yeah, they could not have uh, any land for farming. So uh, early this year in 2021, yeah, around 30 families they decided again yeah, to go back to the uh, their original homeland to farm there. They went there and they already clear. Yeah, actually the the, uh, the the land that they used to farm in the past. However, according to the law, yeah, they were considered yeah uh, illegal encroachment of the forest. So all of them were arrested yeah, under the law, and now uh, the legal case are so ongoing. Um, yeah, many of them yeah, now uh, suffer, yeah, not only for the legal cases, they also could not work in the city, yeah, not only for the COVID-19, because now they, they are facing legal charges, so they could not uh, uh, do anything, yeah. nobody wants to employ them, yeah, because they have uh, legal cases uh, with them. So that's that one of the uh, issues I just like to flag here that, uh, yeah, this kind of uh, uh, land security is so important yeah, for them. Without this, yeah, this, they are facing so many problems, so like we already put in our concept note. Uh, on top on this, as you remember, in July this year, yeah, this area also, yeah, uh, I enlisted at the a World Natural Heritage Site, yeah, a new one, yeah, the World Heritage Committee yeah, just uh, endorsed that uh, nomination. And uh, the situation of uh, current people living there are also the same. So they still have no land for farming. They could not access to the forest yeah, for living yeah, because of the law and regulations yeah, that limit the access to the natural resources. Yeah, many of them get sick and also facing malnutrition. So this kind of situation, I think that uh, is a, a dilemma. Yeah, they could not move anywhere, and yeah, because of the uh, misunderstanding and not really understand the traditional livelihoods of the Kalen uh, indigenous people. Uh, but if you look at the law and policy at the uh, national level. Uh, the constitution uh, does recognize the uh, community rights, but uh, of course, when it translates into action, it's very really poor. Yeah, there's no sub law yeah, to elaborate further how to implement uh, such concept yeah, of the uh, community rights. So this kind of thing still is remaining a big gap yeah, in in the in the country. But I don't know in in other countries. So I, I think that I just like to give this uh, as another example, which clearly uh, um, mentioned that yeah, without this kind of land security, yeah, people yeah, simply face a lot of problems and they have no way out. And yeah, today's discussion is focusing on the roles of the youth as we already yeah, see the video, right? I think that's already clear mentioning about the uh, tendencies of the uh, urbanization in, in, in the future, yeah. how the people are moving into town and yeah, the shifting of the poverty, yeah, you move yeah, to the to the town and yeah, how the, the young people yeah, now who migrate to town are going back to community. Yeah. As I mentioned that yeah, many places are now, they don't have enough land yeah, to, yeah, for the use. Uh, so how we're going to resolve this kind of problem. But anyway, I, I, I believe that yeah, the young people, yeah, now they are a process of uh, what we call the bilingual or bilingual knowledge, yeah, like traditional knowledge, knowledge they still have with them. And at the same time, they also have a modern education. I think that if they're able to combine yeah, these two kind of knowledge, they are able to uh, adjust themselves they can live in the city and they can also go back to the community and, and, and work there. I think that uh, that's a lot of uh, advantages for the young people who have a new education. And anyway, yeah, there are also a lot of challenges yeah, uh, like law policies yeah, that not really uh, recognize yeah, land general rights or less security of the uh, uh, 
as indigenous and local communities. I think that's also remain a challenge. How we are going to address this issue? Now, of course, uh, one of them is like a collective action. Yeah, like we already yeah uh, uh, emphasized in uh, in many uh, statements and in many uh, uh, countries. So I I also just wish that yeah this kind of uh, exchange of knowledge and experiences from different countries of the uh, IOC members and also other partner organizations and also supporting uh, agencies. Yeah. So we could also find way out and able to yeah, resolve this uh, long-standing problem that just let to end up with the worst that United We Stand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kitisak. And it is really inspiring, I hope, for all our young leaders who is joined us today here. And also thanks for highlighting the all challenges that our youth in Asia are facing for today's. And of course, it is important to secure the land rights for youth. And today we will have more discussion on that. Yeah. So thank you very much. And I'm sure that also the another speaker will add more about the uh, used in rural rural areas that you also mentioned in your speech. So please let us also invite another young leader from Asia, uh, Mohin from Ekta Parishad in India, who is responsible mostly for the youth activities in their organization. And uh, I'm sure that uh, most of you know that in Ekta Parishad, they also focusing on youth participation from rural and the urban both. And they have the initiative, they uh, named the uh, Go Rurban, yeah, to promote the idea of uh, youth participation in the different processes. So, and the, I'm really happy that we have Mohin as a speaker also, because he's also one of the six uh, Asian young leaders who joined this year our Youth Fellowship ILC program. So please, Mohin, take the floor and uh, deliver your strong and powerful speech to all youth of Asia, yeah? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mirgul, uh, for the introduction. Uh, Jai Jagat uh, to everyone and a very good afternoon. Uh, today, I am speaking here on behalf of Ikta Parishad. Uh, at my place, uh, Anish is supposed to be here, uh, but unfortunately, uh, day before yesterday, uh, we lost our leader and great inspiration, uh, Dr. Essen Subarao, uh, who we also call as IG. Uh, he is not just uh, inspiration for our movement and organization, uh, but also inspiration for many, many uh, young uh, people, uh, children, uh, uh, and people who are uh, who are working for uh, justice and peace across the world. Uh, so our entire team uh, is there um, in his last rituals. So I am here today uh, to speak uh, on behalf of Ekta Parishad. Uh, I also want to convey uh, the best uh, wishes uh, from uh, Rajagopal P V, uh, the founder of Ekta Parishad, uh, Anish, and and everyone uh, at Ekta Parishad uh, for this uh, wonderful uh, event of uh, youth and land, sorry, uh, of uh, ILC Asia, um, which, uh, which is really important uh, because uh, in this, uh, we cover uh, different aspects uh, uh, around uh, land. And also uh, this session is very important uh, because uh, this uh, focus on the role of young people. Uh, the past some years for us been really great uh, in terms of exploring uh, the opportunities of working with young people, uh, especially uh, creating a leadership space. Uh, also in Ekta Parishad, uh, we, we focus much on uh, getting uh, you know, active participation of young people uh, in very important roles, uh, which uh, been a great learning uh, for us. Uh, I also want to uh, acknowledge uh, the interest and uh, uh, active uh, contribution of ILC uh, in creating a wonderful uh, space uh, where young people can not just only participate, but uh, they also get nurtured 
uh, with the leadership skills uh, these leadership skills uh, are helping them uh, in creating a very important uh, space uh, within their organizations and on the subject uh, which they are working uh, with the jay jagat uh, global uh, foot march uh, we experience uh, the ilc uh, collaboration for ilc jay jagat uh, fellowship uh, which been a wonderful experience for us uh, in that uh, uh, we got to uh, uh, know uh, different uh, you know uh, perspectives of young people who who came uh, from different countries to participate uh, in the foot march uh, and that experience also helped us uh for uh, deciding and creating uh, the further vision of jay jagat uh, so now uh, we are focusing on jay jagat as a decade uh, which starts from jay jagat 2020 to jay jagat uh, 3030 so 2030 uh and and in this uh, we also uh, trying uh, you know how young people can uh, be in a leadership role Uh, so yeah, uh, I think that's that's really great uh, how we are trying to create uh, these kind of platforms uh, as a network uh, within our organizations. Also, I want to uh, mention here about uh, uh, you know uh, the increasing violence and uh, uh, the popular uh, the popular voice uh, which is uh, promoting violence as a fantasy. uh because of which uh, you know young people are getting attracted towards it and they are finding it as a easy and quick uh, solution which is not uh, the reality and i also want to say here that violence is not just physical it's also uh, mental it's also verbal and it's also larger than what we see uh, in reality uh so we need to focus a lot more uh, in creating non violent spaces where young people can participate uh, spaces uh, which uh, promote non violence as an important uh, action as an important uh, idea uh, for young people because whatever we will create uh, whatever uh, we promote uh, need uh, young people uh, to practice non violence uh as a, as a communication in actions and uh, uh that should be uh you know our uh, priority also so uh i want to uh, say that uh, you know we need to uh, make uh, non violence as an important uh, as an important tool uh, in our actions especially uh, working with uh, young people because uh, that will uh, not just uh, uh, groom them or nurture them as a better leaders but that will also help uh, us sustaining our movement for a longer period of time non violent is a slow process but uh, the impact uh, is really great uh, so yeah and and i i think uh, we all can uh, really create a non violent as a, as something um, uh you know there in our modules of training in there are actions in there are processes uh which will uh, which will be a wonderful experience uh other than uh, other than this i also want to focus on uh, you know agriculture as a skill uh today when we are talking about uh, uh today when we are talking about i think there are two voices coming uh okay okay uh it's good uh so yeah i was saying that uh, we have to focus on agriculture as a skill uh because uh, right now other things are being promoted uh, among young people uh as a skill like uh, you know uh, different job roles uh, different uh, positions uh, but uh, they are not uh, finding you know agriculture as something uh, very popular 
very important uh, and it's important that uh, young people should take up this uh, very important role uh, and understand uh, that agriculture uh, can be can be a skill and uh, that can uh, help them uh, leading uh, leading uh, a very powerful uh, uh, profession also so we need to we need to see uh, how we can make this uh, popular among young people that uh, agriculture is is a very important uh, skill so uh, towards a conclusion uh, i just want to say uh, that uh, um, we we really need to see uh, young people uh, not just uh, in numbers uh, but as individuals uh, who are capable of creating a difference who are uh, capable uh, enough of uh, uh, making uh, themselves heard uh, in uh, great uh, platforms uh, to uh, facilitate uh, the process of change and achieving uh, the goal uh, which we all uh, are dreaming together which we all are visioning together and uh, we as ekta parishad uh, really uh, believe uh, in in the power uh, in the power of young people in the role of young people and we together uh, as as a group uh, can really promote uh, this idea uh, of mainstreaming our uh, youth and uh, bringing them uh, in important roles and hearing their uh, their voices their perspective and working together in in a very uh, you know coexisting uh, platform uh, because uh, both both are very important uh, the energy of young people and the experience of the elders so these both need a wonderful fusion uh, which can create some uh, very uh, innovative uh, solutions uh, that will lead to change uh, thank you thank you so much Jai Jagat. Super, super. Thank you very much, dear Mohin, and thanks for the even recognizing the IOC Jai Jagat Fellowship. Yes, yeah, so thanks for that, and thanks for the some ideas to provide some solution there. I hope today we will have really rich discussions, and uh, there are more opportunity for young leaders in Asia to uh, with the IOC Youth Fellowship Program. Thank you. So, uh, dear colleagues, dear friends, before we will start, I just would like to uh, call you for the another one minute silent to, in respect of this, our diarist, uh, Mr. Bihadji. So, uh, as Anu mentioned, it, it is really big loss to the old society in India, I'm sure, and especially for youth as he was working for the last uh, years to support the youth and learning processes there. So please let us just to recognize him as well and in respect, just to keep one minute silent and then we can continue, yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank you, dear friends. May his soul will rest in peace. Yeah, so we all pray for that. So today, just to continue our sessions, I would like just also highlight that we have some translations in English, Thai, Bahasa, Vietnamese and Khmer, and also science language with us. So please feel free to use the translation services as you can, as uh, any languages choose up to you. Also, please feel free to introduce yourselves from where you are and what is your passion on the, uh, regarding to the, today's topic and the, even in the general you know, about the IOC Asia or uh, Asia Land Forum that we conduct in the yeah, last two days. So please share your any comments in the chat. Feel free to introduce yourself as well. Also, uh, Today, I just would like also say that we have another one hour discussion of more than one hour yet discussion on the different use related topics. So my colleague Elisabetta uh, from ILC Secretariat, who is leading the whole process of ILC Youth Fellowship Program in, in ILC will support us and moderate the session. After the session, we will have short information about the upcoming GLF in Jordan the Global Land Forum and also Global Land Forum use. 
So, and then also we have some short uh, um, rem uh, kind of closing remarks, let's say. We invited some uh, speakers to speak about the importance of uh, Asia Land Forum once more and highlight what we could reach after these two days and almost also today, yeah, of all these three day discussions as uh, Asia Land Forum 2021. So please, Stay with us and let me invite my colleague Elisabetta to start her moderation. And please, I think you're already here. Yes, I can see Elisabetta. Thank you for joining. And so, yes, good. Uh, well, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, yes, um, it would be great if you can uh, introduce yourself via. Uh, via the chat. Uh, it is a pleasure for me to moderate this session on uh, access to land in Asia for, uh, for young people, for youth, um, and uh, uh, approach it from the perspective of identifying what are the main challenges and the main opportunities that exist in, uh, in Asia with regard to uh, access to land for youth and also um, uh, the, the role that uh, young movements play in the, uh, in the achievement of, um, of land rights, uh, of land rights um, for youth. Um, so in a way, what we aim at doing with this, uh, with this uh, um, session is to learn more from the uh, data that have been collected, the researches that have been uh, conducted on uh, achieving, on, on what is the status of achieving the land rights uh, of youth in Asia. Then uh, we will also explore uh, what ILC is doing to support uh, what ILC is doing to support young leaders, that's uh, what has been already mentioned, the, um, the Youth Fellowship, Young Leaders Fellowship Program. We have the pleasure of having two um, young uh, leader fellows in here. I will give you more detail uh, in a, later on. And uh, as Mirgul was saying, we are already in, uh, uh, on, the, on our way, on our route towards uh, the Global Land Forum in Jordan, eventually after uh, it has been postponed due to the pandemic, we are eventually making it. So next uh, March, there will be the, uh, the Global Land Forum in Jordan. And ILC decided to dedicate uh, two entire days to the um, to the youth. So we will have the Global Land Forum youth at the beginning of the forum. So the aim of this session is also to um, explore what would be the priority areas that uh, we want to um, address uh, during the youth um, uh, Global uh, Land Forum youth. Um, so um, the first, uh, the first, um, well, we, we will have uh, six, um, six speakers, um, and we will divide this uh, session into uh, two as uh, into two main parts. So uh, we have the first part with two um, with two speeches. Um, one will uh, cover the uh, well. One will cover the um, research that has been conducted. Uh, the research that has been conducted in uh, on on youth and land uh, by the by the youth and land Asia platforms, and the other one will be uh, a focus on the um, work of KPA with uh, young people and what is the role of uh, youth in the decision, decision making spaces related to land issues then we will have a session of question and answer and then we will have three other speakers oh, sorry i said six i should have said five and then we have um, two other speakers th three other speakers sorry two fellows from the fellowship program and uh, and um, one other speaker that will focus on the youth uh, involvement in the decision making process on and climate change in uh, central asia at the end of this we will also have a 10 minutes uh, discussion with all of you uh, so for us to identify um, common priorities. While we the, the speakers speak, uh, feel free to write in the chat any question, any thought that you want to discuss further. Um, 
my colleagues uh, Andita, that you perfectly know, and uh, and Simona, that you know as well, will help us uh, identifying uh, the most important questions in the chat. But we will also open the floor for actual. Um, um, uh, oh. Okay, for with, for actual um, questions during the uh, during the uh, Q and A session. So let me uh, give the floor to Maylin Makubai. I hope I pronounced her name correctly. She is the coordinator for the Youth and Land Rights Program at the Asian Farmer Association for Sustainable Rural Development, also known as AFA in the Philippines. And she has been uh, working in uh, environmental management, public health, and sustainable agriculture. And what she will do for us today is pre presenting the preliminary findings of the research on um, that has been conducted by the youth and land platforms in um, five uh, specific Asian um, countries, uh, Bangladesh, Cambodia, India, Indonesia, and the Philippines. So, um, uh, Mylene, please tell us what are the key elements of this research? What would you identify? Um, what, what is the state of youth, ac of youth access uh, to land in these five countries? And uh, um, please uh, let us know more about uh, how including youth in the decision-making process is uh, crucial to achieve uh, people-centered uh, land governance. The floor is uh, is yours, Meli. Please, you Thank have you, ten minutes. You have ten minutes. Then we go to the other speakers, and then we go for the Q and A at the end. Thanks a lot. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Elisabetta, and good afternoon, everyone. I am Mylene Mahabuhay, representing the Youth and Land Asia platform. So let me just quickly share my screen. Okay, so first let me introduce to you the Youth and Land Asia platform. It is a youth-led youth -led platform of organizations in the region working to advance the rights of youth to land. It is currently comprised of five organizations, namely RMI or the Inst Indonesian Institute for Forest and Environment, CDA or the Community Development Association from Bangladesh, Farmer and Nature Net Cambodia, Ekta Parishad from India, and AFA or the Asian Farmers Association for Sustainable Rural Development, a regional network of 22 farmers organizations in Asia. To start, it is important for us to understand the context of youth and land in the Asian region. Asia covers 24% of the world's land area, accounting for 34% of agricultural land and 15% of forests. In addition, 60% of the world's population is in Asia. Asia's urban per population in particular is showing an increasing trend with more than half of the total population expected to reside in urban areas by 2030. The region is also home to 75% of the world's family farming households, 80% of whom are small-scale producers. Meanwhile, the youth population is increasing worldwide. Currently, three-fifths of individuals with ages 15 to 24 years old live in developing countries in Asia. However, with the increase um, in youth population comes the steady increase in unemployment rate in the region, from 9.7% in 2010 to 10.6% a decade after. Young people in Asia are particularly vulnerable due to their unsecured tenure rights. Young people are far more likely to fear losing home or land than older people. And because of youth unemployment and lack of access to land, there is, ha there is a higher risk for youth poverty. As such, it is now more important than ever that we take action to address youth and land issues in order to shape the health and prosperity of the world to come. To contribute to this action, the Youth and Land Asia platform members carried out surveys and consultations with their youth con constituencies to assess one, how youth are contextually seen and acknowledged, second, how youth access and use land, third, how youth access information regarding land, 
And fourth, how youth participates in land decision making. From this, the platform aims to develop position papers outlining the needs and demands concerning youth and land. First is youth recognition. How do young people see themselves? According to the surveys or consultations, they see themselves as playing an active role in everyday activities in their community, being the next generation, being creative people with high aspirations and, and, and enthusiasm, and having a fighting spirit to build their communities. However, there are some labels that make uh, this group underestimated, such as the lack of experience and skills, lack of maturity, among others. As such, decision-making with respect to land remains in the hand of elders. In addition, we observe that there are varying definitions of what is considered as youth. Some governments use the UN definition of 15 to 24 years old, while others consider individuals with ages 15 to 30, 18 to 30, etc. under this group. Youth is also seen as a transition phase. As such, youth are only able to access land through inheritance norms or through the market. The youth is also a heterogeneous group. There are youth living in urban areas and youth in rural areas. For the latter, you have youth that are in school, while others are out of school working in farms, among many others. Differing socioeconomic positions affect access to land. Gender is also a major issue, as young women are not included in titles and not considered as main beneficiaries in land distribution projects. This diversity requires specific attention in countries' legislations and policies. We have seen in the previous sessions in the last two days in this forum that participation in land governance and decision making is a huge issue. But this situation is much more prevalent for the youth who are rarely involved, if at all, in policy processes and who often lack safe places to practice their freedom of expression. This is usually, usually influenced by the way youth are recognized or not recognized. The survey also confirmed that there is a lack of or limited availability of governance structures or institutions at the local and national levels which allow you to participate in decision making. The challenge now for us is to think of how we will gather youth voices and participation through creative and challenging ways fit to the creativeness and dynamism of this sector. For instance, we can look at how young people access information on land. Based on the survey, youth access information mostly through radio, online platforms such as social media, and by participating in workshops or meetings and public campaigns of their farmers' organization or community organization. However, we found that the information, that the spaces for youth are actually limited and that the information regarding land cannot be easily understood by young people, impeding their ability to advocate for policies and programs. This should be also supported by capacity building and technical support to enable them to communicate their demand and advocate for their needs. Land use and access policies should include youth because, youth, because land is a resource base for youth to, de to realize their human rights, such as economic rights, social rights, cultural rights, and civil and political rights. Access to land is also a sustainability issue. For instance, how can we encourage or attract youth to agriculture and combat the graying of farmers when they do not have, when the youth do not have lands to farm and manage? In this project of Anant Mondi in India, we see that if given access to land together with other technical, financial support, and safety nets, youth are actually capable to realize their potential not only as individuals, but also members of their communities, like Hassan, who is working with unemployed youth, or Jumer, who is organizing their young members. Based on these initial findings, the Youth and Land Asia platform calls for us to, one, recognize the youth as an important sector for land rights issues. This recognition should have concrete support in terms of policy, institutional integration, among many others. 
Second, we should provide a platform for you to engage meaningfully, the key word is meaningfully, in the political and cultural arena. The format and channel should match the dynamism of the sector. And third, we should provide you with an ecosystem to exchange knowledge, ideas, skills, not only with each other, but also with adults and other sectors. To end, we invite you to join our movement. You can learn more about the Youth and Land Asia activities through following our social media pages seen here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mylena. Thank you for being in the, in the time, for respecting the time. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, so I will, now, um, I will now give the floor to Lela Sari. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. She's a young woman farmer from KPA in West Java, Indonesia. Uh, she is also a training instructor and a community assistant, and it's um, one of the graduates of the IELTS Asia um, members KPA Agrarian Reform Academy program. She, she has been. She's not only a young women farmer herself, but she's also um, supporting other uh, young um, uh, young farmers. And uh, she works with uh, local communities a lot. So I would like to ask Leila Le uh, to share her personal life experience in with regard to the importance of including uh, youth again in decision making processes, and uh, um, share with us what are the key elements of this of her experience and what are her. Um, um, the most important element that she identified uh, through her own experience. You have uh, five minutes and then we will have time for questions. If anyone asks any question, you can start writing down in the chat. Thanks a lot. The floor is yours, Lela. We, we have to go into the channel in case you are not. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Saya Lela Sari, uh, lahir dan besar di Serikat Petani Pasundan. SPP merupakan anggota Konsorsium Pembaruan Agraria uh, saya juga merupakan kader Akademi Reforma Agraria Sejati atau ARAS. Uh, orang tua saya, ibu dan bapak adalah petani, yaitu petani padi dan ternak sapi. Uh, hari ini saya akan uh, menjelaskan pengalaman saya berorganisasi di Serikat Petani Pasundan. Uh, bagaimana kemudian uh, saya akan coba menjelaskan terlebih dahulu bagaimana masalah agraria yang dihadapi oleh petani di Indonesia. Uh, yang pertama adalah soal ketimpangan penguasaan tanah, terutama petani di Jawa, Bali, dan Lampung. Dampak dari ketimpangan tanah tersebut, para petani di Indonesia menjadi petani uh, yang berlahan sempit atau yang sering kami disebut dengan petani burem. Kemudian, uh, masalah yang terjadi di Indonesia adalah soal konflik agraria, uh, baik konflik agraria lama maupun konflik agraria baru. Uh, seperti misalnya ada proyek strategis nasional, kalau yang sekarang. Kalau kami di SPP, di empat kabupaten itu juga berkonflik dengan uh, perhutani, uh, perkebunan swasta, dan juga perkebunan negara. Kemudian, Yang ketiga adalah konversi lahan pertanian. Banyak tanah pertanian, fungsi dan peruntukannya menjadi non-pertanian. Contohnya menyulap menjadi pertanian monokultur, di mana hal tersebut menyebabkan banyak masyarakat desa melakukan urbanisasi, menjadi buruh di perkotaan, menjadi TKW, seperti itu. Kemudian juga ada kerusakan lingkungan. Uh, karena perluasan lahan misalnya, sehingga itu mengakibatkan banjir dan longsor. Kemudian juga uh, soal uh, regenerasi petani, rata-rata uh, banyak petani yang menua atau usia lanjut gitu. Uh, sedikit sekali petani muda desa yang minat terhadap pertanian, 
karena melihat gambaran petani itu tidak punya masa depan hidupnya. Katakanlah itu gak sejahtera. Itu persoalan atau masalah yang dihadapi oleh petani Indonesia di Indonesia. Nah, e, tentunya saya sebagai anak petani merasa terpanggil untuk ikut berjuang bersama serikat karena sejak kecil, sejak umur sejak umur 7 tahun e, itu menyaksikan perjuangan orang tua misalnya seperti ikut demonstrasi, reclaiming lahan sampai menduduki lahan. Karena SPP juga merupakan anggota KPA di Jawa Barat sejak tahun 2000. Saya kemudian sekolah di uh, sekolah yang dibangun oleh Serikat Petani Pasundan. Sejak di perguruan tinggi saya ikut terlibat aktif uh, mendampingi petani, melakukan pendidikan pendidikan dan pelatihan terhadap perempuan dan pemuda. Uh, saya memotret dan menyaksikan para perempuan yang ada di Serikat Tani itu menjadi leading sektor atau pemimpin di desanya masing-masing. Juga ada yang menjadi uh, pemimpin di tingkat kecamatan ataupun kabupaten. Nah, perempuan dari Serikat itu mempunyai kompetensi dan berdaya saing dibandingkan dengan para perempuan yang tidak berserikat. Nah, para pemudanya juga, para pemuda desa itu menjadi tokoh muda di desa yang dihitung dan didengar pendapatnya di pemerintahan desa. Selain itu juga banyak para pemuda kota yang menjadi pendamping petani. Awalnya karena mereka melakukan live-in, misalnya bertemu dengan tokoh-tokoh pejuang di desa, lama-kelamaan menjadi tertarik dan akhirnya menjadi anggota juga yang terus konsisten untuk mendampingi para petani. Karena eh, Serikat Petani Pasundan atau SPP itu juga termasuk eh, organisasi yang sangat produktif dalam mendorong untuk tumbuh kader-kader muda. Eh, kemudian eh, sampai saat ini, eh, saya terus memastikan soal ideologisasi perjuangan di sekolah-sekolah. Karena sekolah kami bukan hanya belajar seperti di sekolah pada umumnya, tetapi sekolah dibangun untuk menyeleksi calon pemimpin gerakan sosial. Baik pemimpin di bidang politik, ekonomi, maupun pemimpin di daerah. Sesuai minat, bakat dari siswa itu sendiri. Kemudian sekolah juga, itu justru lupa ya, udah. Kemudian sekolah juga mempunyai lahan bersama yang dikelola minimal e, 5 hektar per sekolah. Karena kami mempunyai 9 sekolah untuk dijadikan lahan percontohan dan pusat studinya bagi para petani. E, melakukan misalnya melakukan inovasi seperti dalam pengelolaan hasil pertanian, misalnya kopi seperti yang terlihat dalam gambar itu kegiatan kami di sekolah melakukan pengolahan hasil pertanian, itu kopi contohnya. Nah, meskipun tidak diakui negara, tapi kami merasa aman karena punya kekuatan berorganisasi untuk menggarap lahan pertanian. Kemudian juga saya terlibat juga memastikan dalam mengurus tata kuasa tanah. Misalnya memastikan bahwa anggota serikat, baik laki-laki maupun perempuan itu, mempunyai hak yang sama dalam hal kepemilikan lahan misalnya. Kemudian juga tata guna memastikan mana lahan untuk kolektif, mana lahan untuk pemukiman, fasilitas umum, dan fasilitas sosial, juga lahan produksi dan lahan konservasi. Kemudian juga saya turut memastikan uh, tata produksi dengan melakukan model pengelolaan uh, pengurusan bersama, misalnya membangun koperasi, di, membangun koperasi perempuan. Kemudian juga Tata distribusi dan konsumsi, misalnya membangun sistem pemasaran dan distribusi yang ada terhadap berbagai produk dan olahan hasil bumi oleh petani. Selain itu juga, saya terlibat aktif dalam konsolidasi masa untuk demonstrasi terhadap pemerintah yang tidak pro terhadap rakyat, seperti kemarin yang baru-baru itu demo omnibus law, misalnya saya ikut konsolidasi masa di gerakan di Serikat Tani. Setelah saya berorganisasi, menjadi banyak tahu bagaimana situasi agraria di banyak tempat di Indonesia. 
dan mengetahui kawan-kawan pemuda yang mengalami situasi yang sama melalui organisasi konsorsium pembaruan agraria. Harapannya dengan acara Asia Land Forum ini menjadi ajang untuk saling memperkuat dan bisa bertukar pemahaman dengan pemuda lain. Mungkin itu saja yang bisa saya sampaikan. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sorry, I was still muted. Thank you, Lela. That was uh, extremely interesting. And I would also like to thank the interpreter that is in the, that in the English channel was doing an amazing job. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you again, Lela, for sharing your uh, very uh, interesting experience. Um, we have now uh, five minutes to uh, have some questions, to ask some questions to both Lela and Mylin. So is there anyone who wants to ask something to any of the two speakers that we had? We're sharing extremely interesting uh, inputs, I would say. If you want to ask anything, as we don't have any waiting list for questions, just put your mic on and speak, please. Or also, if you want to share something, I see in the chat that uh, Kong Sokoin was sharing um, something about Cambodia. So feel also free to make a comment, not just a question. It's an open floor for you. Elizabeth, Dinesh is here. Please, Dinesh. Thank you. So uh, as per this, now I cross the, the, the definition of uh, the ILC for <laughs> youth, but still I have a question. So uh, not a question too, but just to how we can see in the whole youth process, because I read an email today for, from the ILC also about the youth. Uh, yeah, hello? Yes, Dinesh, we lost you. Yeah. Please. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Now you can? Yeah. Yes, now we can hear you. Yeah. So uh, it, it's like that, uh, what is about the diversity, how we, we are inclusive for like we have a two day discussion about the indigenous more and then uh, also for an Asia perspective. So what is the, our, our composition for diversity? I'm just talking about the youth, uh, the whole no, in Asia. So that is what, how we are thinking from this uh, forum, no? for this forum. To include other diversity, like the uh, young leaders, women, pastoralists, blah, blah, but in that context, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure whether this was a question for Mailin or was a question for ILC more broadly. Uh, Mailin, maybe you want to make a comment on that because you raised the point of the diversity of youth. So you look quite best, quite good, well placed to uh, make some uh, point about that. Yeah, I think um, so. In, within the Youth and Land Asia platform, I think the bulk of the members are working with young farmers. And within that, there are women farmers, uh, young IP farmers, and so on. But I agree that we also have to look at, at the ILC level if we're able to cover the diversity of the youth and their issues. And if we're able to uh, bring them in and give them a platform to participate in. So uh, maybe someone from ILC could, could, <laughs> could comment on that. Thank you. Absolutely, Mylin. I Since this would lead us straight to the second part of the session, that's the ILC uh, fellowship, Young Leaders Fellowship Program, I would uh, dub double check one last time if there is any specific question to either Lela or Mylin so that we can then move to the, to the other, 
to the other um, part of the session. No, there is no, no further question. Okay, then I don't see any hand raised. No. Okay. So Kong was writing in the chat that he could not uh, share his experience from Cambodia because it's in a noisy environment, but you have his uh, comments in the chat in case you want to um, uh, read it through. And I would then maybe somehow answer to, uh, to um, Dinesh's question in a way, introducing you to the um, Future Leaders Fellowship, which is a program that ILC has launched this year with the aim of, um, as we say, cultivating the next generation of change makers. Um, and uh, uh, the program involves 22 um, fellows from all over the world. And as Dinesh was saying, it aims at being um, extremely inclusive. Uh, we have, I'm copying here in the chat, the list of all our fellows. You will see some names that you know, and you will also see in the list our two, um, our two um, speakers, um, so our two speakers for today, Krishna and Rudolf, which I will introduce in a few seconds. But uh, the idea of this fellowship program was, in fact, to create a network of uh, young leaders across um, the ILC uh, membership and um, provide them with some technical support in order to reinforce their, their work as leaders in their own uh, organization and also to establish a network where these young leaders can um, exchange among them. They are young leaders for today, they will be uh, leaders of tomorrow. And the idea is that we want, to, um, uh, we want to support diversity and inclusion. We have uh, ensured uh, gender balance in the cohort of the uh, fellows. We have covered all the regions. We have leaders from different backgrounds. Uh, we have indigenous people, um, leader, indigenous communities leaders. We have uh, young leaders that work um, with our cultural organization. We really try to ensure uh, the most, uh, we try to, to make it the most uh, uh, inclusive uh, court. Uh, I hope we, we managed. Uh, today with us, we have um, two um, leaders, two, young, two participants of the uh, Future Leaders Fellowship Program. Um, Rudolf, who is the area coordinator at C CARD based in the Philippines, and Krishna, who works as community facilitators at the Kapaeng Foundation in Bangladesh. Um, Rudolf, um, specific areas of work is um, uh, encouraging uh, young uh, people, youth, to participate in the agrarian reform advocacy process and increasing youth leadership within farmers cooperatives. Um, while, while Krishna um, works also with uh, um, indigenous women's networks in, um, in Bangladesh, so she has uh, an expertise and a focus on indigenous people customary land rights. Uh, I had the honor to meet them during the fellowship program and uh, also learn from their, their experience. Um, I have two um, questions for them. The first question I've, I have is, uh, what does the ILC Future Leadership Fellowship mean uh, to you? I, I explained it from our point of view as ILC, but uh, we would like to hear from you what does it mean from your point of view, from the point of view of uh, young leaders in, uh, and, and in uh, your specific context and area of work, and linked to that, how do you think that your experience as a fellow and your action plan uh, within this fellowship can contribute to the work of your organization and can benefit your community? I'm mentioning action plans because one of the things that 
uh, the young leaders are doing beyond participating in the program is elaborating a um, specific action plan for their own organization. So, uh, Rudolf, you are the first. If you want to answer to these two questions, we have um, we have around uh, twenty minutes in uh, in total. So, the floor is yours for. Um, yes, the floor is yours, Rudolf, please. All right. So thank you, uh, Elisabetta, and uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Good evening and uh, good morning. So uh, the ILC Future Leaders uh, Fellowship for me is a rare opportunity given to aspiring leaders like me who wants to contribute positive change in the communities I work with. Uh, these are communities where smallholder farmers, farm laborers, tenants, and their families have been struggling for decades to secure recognition, ownership, and management of the lands, which have been their primary resource to produce food and to generate an income. So this fellowship, which aims to develop a new breed of community leaders, through different methods of teaching, such as online lectures, problem analysis, knowledge sharing, and most of all, uh, experiential learning has increased my desire to learn more, uh, analyze and understand the complex issues faced by our partner communities, especially with the stories of victories and challenges shared by my fellows, which are similar from our situation. Uh, furthermore, as the area supervisor of our organization in Visayas, in which I take part in making decisions with regards to how we strategize and uh, implement our initiatives at the grassroots level, the experience I gained from this fellowship gave me an opportunity to uh, lay down plans for a more inclusive uh, rural development where the younger members of the farming households well, we'll have a greater role, especially in claim making and sustaining the tradition of family farming. Considering the fact that based on our, our profiles of our assisted communities, around 65% of the household heads who normally participated in the projects are in their senior age. And most of them have uh, difficulty in absorbing information that is, that are too technical and they are physically too weak also to engage in the demanding tasks and uh, that come with claim making, especially during this time of pandemic where they are considered as among the vulnerable. Uh, for the second question on how do I think my experience and by action plan can contribute to the work of our organization and uh, benefit our community. Uh, at a personal level, though this uh, fellowship program is an opportunity to learn and expand my network, this becomes also both a challenge and pressure to me. Uh, challenge because I have to allot additional hours on top of my official number of work time, given that the online lectures were done late at night in uh, the Philippine time, and then I have to wake up also early the following day to do field work. Also because the lectures are done purely online, at some point I felt I need to do self-study to uh, really absorb the information because of the limited interaction that comes with online learning. And the uh, pressure because I know at the end of the program, we are required to implement a pilot project that will apply the learnings and experience we gain. Uh, considering also that this will be our first time to implement a project uh, solely devoted to uh, the young farmers. But uh, even with this, I believe I was able to come up with a relevant project proposal, which we intend to implement next month with the help of my colleagues and our farmer paralegal volunteers. My action plan will focus on capacitating and uh, mobilizing youth leaders to promote the new security and participation in social groups from among young members of agrarian reform households in Capiz and Iloilo provinces here in the Philippines. 
Uh, we are targeting to develop at least 20 youth community facilitators who will be knowledgeable on the basics of agrarian reform issues, policies, and process. These uh, youth leaders will be trained and mentored by our senior paralegal volunteers. And after the training and mentoring program, we expect these youth leaders to facilitate learning sessions among young members of the farming households. We plan to initially conduct the sessions in three farming communities, and we hope to reach uh, 80 to 100 more youth. The initiative is very timely because by May next year, we will have our national and local elections in the Philippines. And we are planning to integrate voters education in the training modules, as well as uh, during community-based learning sessions to raise awareness on how to assess and select appropriate leaders that are supportive of the welfare of uh, smallholder farmers. Uh, as of 2019, uh, 37 of the entire electorate are young Filipinos. So the result of the pilot implementation will be our basis in developing our next action and initiatives for the youth. Thank you. Thank you, Rudolf. Thank you very much. I would now give... Would now give Sorry, there is some echo. Can you hear me? Okay. I would now give the floor to um, Krishna. So the questions are uh, remain. Uh, the questions remain the the same. So how what 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 is the what is this program for you? What does this uh, what does this program mean to you? And how your experience as a fellow and how your action plan would contribute to the work of your organization? and benefit your community. The floor is yours, Krishna. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the floor and also a very good afternoon from Bangladesh. Uh, I am Krishna Kisha at present engaged with Cupping Foundation. Uh, for me, this ILC uh, Future Leader Fellowship Program is a platform where I, in, uh, where I uh, I will learn more about uh, our uh, uh, fellow fellows where they will share their experiences and also uh, these strategies and techniques they are uh, adopting to uh, solve their issues uh, in, uh, in their countries and how uh, their uh, uh, strategies can also help me uh, to uh, uh, to sort out, uh, to uh, sort out some uh, action plans and also strategies for me that might work in uh, my place in order uh, to claim and uh, the land rights of the indigenous peoples and it is also a, a platform where i have learned uh, a lot about the land rights movement and why it is important for the young people to engage in this sector and why we should uh, involve other youths to engage uh, in this uh, and also uh, I have also learned many stories from uh, our fellows, uh, how they are contributing in their community level and um, how they are engaged in this sector to have a, uh, to have a positive impact. Uh, and also we have learned about the nonviolent actions that we can take uh, 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 when we are uh, promoting the land rights of indigenous people, especially uh, in Bangladesh, uh, when Cupping Foundation is uh, fully focused on the indigenous peoples, which uh, does lobby and advocacy for the uh, indigenous uh, people's uh, rights. Um, uh, and also uh, for the second question, uh, uh, my experience from the learning from the online session we have got uh, uh, most important, uh, I would like to uh, say that uh, I have learned more about the advocacy skills, how we ne need to uh, how we need to uh, 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 how we need need to uh, select our stakeholders more effectively so we can have a greater impact for the advocacy and how to lead in the 
how to lead uh, to a network so we can uh, come up together uh, to uh, to work we can uh, work together to have a, a better impact and also um, uh, for my action plans, uh, we have uh, decided to conduct uh, uh, advocacy focus uh, training uh, to 20 uh, youths uh, from the uh, from the youth uh, organ network uh, that Kaping Foundation has formed, which is Bangladesh Indigenous Youth Network. We have decided to uh, uh, build a capacity of 20 youths who will in future uh, uh, help in the uh, advocacy process and they will engage uh, actively in the policy formation and also uh, decision making uh, for uh, the climate change actions and they will also promote the uh, indigenous uh, people's land governance and uh, forest uh, governance and how they also conserve water, uh, the indigenous techniques. Um, uh, they can actually uh, have uh, uh, the better impact in the community level because they are already staying there and they have easy access to knowledge. Uh, and also uh, we have a human chain um, for the protection of the environment uh, uh, where youth leaders, the trained youth leaders, they will uh, engage the community people in the human chain to demand uh, for the uh, um, uh, uh, protection of the environment. Uh, and this is also a good opportunity for Cupping Foundation because uh, this is the first time uh, when Cupping Foundation will work on climate change and we are hoping to learn from the youth um, and also uh, having trained uh, youth and capacitated youth by the end of our uh, training. Thank you very much. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you. That was, uh, okay. yes, can you, you can hear me. That was um, very interesting. Thanks a lot for sharing your experience. I would now give the floor to um, Kolpon Aitanua, who is the Central Asia Coordinator of, of the Central Asia Youth for Water Network. And, uh, and he is also the coordinator of the UN Conference of Youth um, for, um, for, for Kyrgyzstan. And he will share with us the importance of the youth uh, involvement in decision-making process with regard to climate, changes, uh, climate change and SDGs. So Kolpon, you have five minutes and then we would go for a question and answer session. I would kindly uh, suggest that uh, you start writing questions in the chat if you have any question for our young uh, leaders uh, and then for Colton was once uh, we have the, the speech um, done. So um, please, Colton, the floor is yours. Um. <clears throat> Uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues uh, from uh, all over Asia. Uh, it is a great honor uh, for me to be here and uh, thank you very much, Elizabeth, for uh, introducing me. Uh, so um, I uh, think uh, it is also an honor for me uh, to be here because I am uh, actually also uh, representing this uh, regional network. Yes, of youth who works on water climate uh, issues and uh, the promotion of youth participation in these uh, in uh, six uh, countries of Central Asia. These are formerly five uh, states of uh, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, uh, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, plus Afghanistan. And um, since uh, for the past uh, about uh, four or five years, I'm much involved with youth and uh, climate uh, change, climate action. Yes, I would like to uh, today uh, deliver two key messages um, uh, to uh, you, dear colleagues. Uh, that uh, first of all, all of the things are interlinked. Uh, so, and I will try to um, show the interlinks uh, in my presentation. Yes, uh, when I say interlinks, first of all, uh, that uh, whatever we do uh, as part of um, climate action, uh, this is much linked uh, to 
the state uh, of um, and the protection and the preservance of our resources, yes, and in this case, uh, land, and um, uh, how uh, healthy and safe to keep our resources uh, also affects, uh, yeah, uh, it also affects uh, uh, peace and uh, sustainable development of our societies. Uh, so, um, in one of her speeches, uh, UNFCC Executive Secretary uh, Patricia Espinosa said that climate change and the SDGs, uh, they are um, really one integral agenda. And you know, I would uh, absolutely agree with these words, uh, because um, as of today, uh, they, um, in most, let's say, parts of the world, uh, in most countries, they are accepted or perceived uh, as two parallel agendas, you know, uh, but indeed, um, I truly believe that it is one integral agenda. And what we do uh, in terms of um, uh, what we uh, call or understand as climate action uh, is uh, actually bringing us uh, to the sustainable development. And it is unavoidable, actually, you know, to skip these interlinks uh, between the climate change, the state of our resources, and in this case, land um, uh, and access to it. Yes. And um, the further links with the peace and uh, prosperity and sustainable development uh, of us as humanity and of us as a planet. Um, and uh, since uh, you are all experts, uh, you know, on land and uh, this uh, tenuous security issues, um, uh, you are ac actually leaders, uh, yes. Um, I mean, youth is recognized to be the leaders of tomorrow, but um, I would argue and uh, really say and some of you already mentioned it, that youth uh, is actually the leaders of uh, today already, you know. So um, in terms of uh, looking at um, land, uh, which is um, our um, uh, core topic of today, then uh, of course we would all agree that land, is, it is an essential uh, natural resource, yes, and um, uh, all depends, uh, all meaning the survival and prosperity of us as humanity, uh, depends on uh, the health and uh, safety of this uh, vital resource. And increased demand, uh, pressure uh, on the land resources, um, it uh, will affect uh, our lives, our uh, economies, and uh, once again, uh, whatever will be the outcome for our sustainable development. Yeah? And uh, building those uh, climate solutions, uh, it is a complex, uh, global, um, very big large scale process yes and uh, the involvement of all levels uh, and uh, of all sections of the society uh, is actually the key you know when we talk about this climate action and uh, yeah i mean climate uh, action uh, and the governance of this so-called climate change yes it is um, at the core of uh, any country's development and the well-being uh, of the nature uh, and its people uh to come to this uh point uh, saying um uh, or uh, highlighting yes the key uh, role of young people um i would like to say that um it is unavoidable uh, as of today uh, to not uh, not to participate you know in this uh, climate governance and uh yeah for these uh, processes to be participatory and result in efficient and effective uh, action um uh, people's rights, yes, uh, have to be taken into account. So uh, climate action uh, should be uh, people-centered, yes. And uh, so uh, young people are important actors um, for climate action success. And uh, I would uh, say that uh, the participation of young people in uh, climate decision-making processes, uh, not just in Central Asia, but on the global scale, yes, it is a human right, first of all. Um, adding to this, uh, the improved land governance and actually uh, enjoying these rights by the young people uh, to these land rights, uh, it is also critical uh, for the achievement of uh, uh, the um, plethora of uh, development outcomes. And um, indeed, uh, I mean, when we include uh, young people, There's, it's only me who, can, who cannot listen to Colpon or you're no, having to get either. Okay. 
Hope on, I think you are frozen. Uh, yes, I am sorry for this. I just realized this. Okay, uh, but, you're back. Thank you. Yes, so I will just use my this latest minutes, um, you know, to uh, once again uh, say yes that uh, the uh, I mean it is vital to include young people because it's a human right first of all, but then second of all. Uh, we know, and um, uh, the excellent speeches uh, before me, yeah, uh, the speakers uh, from all parts of Asia, they mentioned that, uh, yes, uh, we are the largest um, uh, population cohort, you know, the global youth, uh, regional youth, or even if we go to this level of our countries, um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, at least in Central Asia, and I believe this is true also for wider Asian region, uh, then we as youth make up this uh, large uh, population uh, cohort, you know, and uh, actually uh, capitalizing on um, youth energies and uh, capabilities um, is one of the benefits uh, of including youth uh, in um, climate action and governance. Uh, youth uh, capacities, uh, I mean, if we better address uh, the building of the capacities of youth today, then uh, that way we are also preparing youth for current and future responsibilities, you know. And uh, we are indeed uh, talking about this uh, crucial times in uh, the history of the world, yes, when uh, we have uh, this many young people. And uh, I mean, it's up to us, yes, to decide whether this um, uh, big and powerful uh, youth group uh, will be will turn either in the demographic dividend, yes, and we will see the benefits of using this youth potential, uh, of using this uh, huge human potential uh, capital um, for the benefits of our countries and the societies and their sustainable development. Or uh, if we lose this momentum, then really it might uh, turn into this um, demographic bomb, you know. So uh, from this uh, point of view, it's very critical uh, to um, uh, involve youth and for young people, uh, first of all, uh, to stay curious, uh, to um, stay thirsty, you know, for uh, increasing their um, knowledge, skills, and really uh, exercising this right uh, for uh, participation. And in my last uh, slide, uh, you will see yeah, you will see this, uh, well, it was not the light, the last one, but uh, I mean, in the previous slide that uh, you will see, you know, this uh, beautiful picture. And uh, I mean, for me, it's very symbolic and I give uh, much meaning to it, you know, because um, it is, um, yeah, actually, um, I mean, we call it Kurak in our language in Kyrgyz. Uh, and basically, um, in other words, it's a quilt, you know, uh, but why I say that it's very symbolic, uh, because it symbolizes collective uh, leadership and the unavoidability, you know, uh, of uh, referring to it uh, for us as uh, humanity and especially young people, you know, uh, because it's not just the multiple colorful pieces, yes, that make up this uh, beauty of this quilt, uh, but most importantly, it's the way how these tiny uh, pieces are united. And um, actually this harmony of colors in one picture uh, it also has a meaning behind. So I very much apply it, you know, to really uh, showing those interlinks, as you have seen at that yellow cube, you know, when there are multiple uh, sectors of society, multiple sectors of economy, uh, multiple levels of uh, governance, and actually uh, really um, linking those, but through dialogue and cooperation, uh, and uh, for one common goal, of preserving our planet and all uh, life uh, on it uh, is actually, um, I mean, it's our uh, common challenge, but yet uh, another, it's, it's our uh, common opportunity. And uh, yeah, so indeed it is only through dialogue and cooperation across levels, institutions, cultures, nations, uh, regions, generations, most importantly, uh, we uh, can address the complex challenges uh, as climate change uh, and all those other interlinks uh, related to it, yes, as peace, uh, development, and um, decent life uh, for all. Uh, thank you very much, dear colleagues. Uh, probably uh, it's already time, but um, I just wanted to say 
uh, this final um, message, yes, uh, to us. Yeah, all our colleagues that, you know, um, we are climate action and we have a right uh, to be part of it and to lead it. We are not the leaders of tomorrow. Uh, we are the leaders of today already. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, you can always find more information uh, about us, about the Central Asian Youth for Water uh, through uh, the links. You can always um, uh, contact me. Uh, and yeah, uh, we could uh, we could and we should establish more uh, dialogue and cooperation uh, between youth of um, our countries and the wider Asian region. And I welcome all of your questions. Thank you, uh, Kolpon. I hope I pronounced correctly your name. I already introduced you. My mistaken uh, as a, as a man, of course, you are a woman. I, I think I, I said he rather than she. But I hope I at least pronounced correctly your name. Is it Kolpon? Is it correct? It's uh, Cholpon. But Cholpon. Okay, no, that's you... fine, Elizabeth. <laughs> no, I, I'm I not don't hurt. like to mispronounce people's <laughs> name. It's uh, it's not fair. Uh, so. So thank you, Cholpon. Uh, that was very inspiring. I really loved your last uh, your last slide, and I really loved also your last comment. I totally agree. Well, I you are the leaders of today as the young uh, young leaders of our program, as Lela smiling, and I hope you are also the young leaders of tomorrow. So you are both. <laughs> <laughs> and I see a fantastic comment by Dinesh and a fantastic answer by Mirgul in the chat. Um, maybe Mirgul wants to go on retirement and uh, because she wrote that we really need to bring new people and transfer all our knowledge to, to them. I think they already have plenty of knowledge that they can transfer to, uh, to the older generation. And I definitely agree that what emerges from this uh, discussion today is that the youth in ILC is uh, um, is uh, really doing a, a lot of work at different level in different contexts. Uh, this can happen at community level. This happens at, uh, at research level. This happens at the global advocacy level. So we really explored uh, different um, nuances and different uh, facets of how uh, young leaders in ILC are already engaged in the promotion of uh, people-centered land, um, land governance. Um, um, and it, uh, it is great to have this uh, session in here and sharing this experience. There was a comment in the chat from Sashwati, Good, good to see you here, Sashwati, um, uh, who appreciated, well, the comment is on appreciation of uh, motivating the youth, and she's asking, would we be the follow-up on the fellowship program after the GLF? The question is more to me, so I will rather reply to it in a few seconds, because this links, uh, links this conduct bridges us to the very last part of this uh, session, where we want to identify key areas of work for uh, youth and land. I would first ask any of you if you have questions for um, Cholpon, uh, but also for Krishna and Rudolf, or if there was any question to Maylin and Lela that suddenly rise, uh, that suddenly came to your mind, feel free to ask. There is no questions in the chat besides, uh, besides Sashwati's one, so, if anyone wants to ask anything, just jump in. Just put your mic on. It seems that there is no specific question. Are you sure it's your last shot for questions? Okay, then, um, for now, it seems there is no questions. We will, maybe there will be final comments um, after the, uh, the um, group discussion. Um, well, Sashwati, to respond to the question, I will, um, I will move to the very last part of this uh, session. Um, indeed, during the Global Land Forum, there will be a, a, a session that is linked to the youth involvement. It's called Global Land Forum Youth. It is dedicated to youth, and it aims at discussing the key areas of work for youth access to, to land. 
So as we have here, the most brightful minds um, working on uh, youth access to land in Asia, not only those who spoke, but uh, a lot of ILC members who are very much involved in working um, with youth uh, organizations and on access to land for, uh, for young people. We will now go for a group work where we aim at identifying uh, what are the kind, what, what kind of challenges and what kind of opportunities do you identify in youth access to land in Asia? Uh, my colleague Simona will now open uh, and copy paste a link in the chat. It will, um, it will lead us to a whiteboard. Uh, it's a sort of um, yeah, it's a sort of virtual board where you will be asked to um, write down in a sort of brainstorming exercise what are your um, the, the opportunities and the challenges that you identify. And indeed, this will contribute to the discussion during the Global uh, Land Forum. More specifically, while uh, Simona opens the link, more specifically, Sashwati, um, the, the fellows of the fellowship program are currently preparing specific action plans, as um, Krishna and Rudos uh, briefly mentioned in their intervention. And uh, the idea is that they will implement this action plan with some uh, small financial support from ILC, uh, and the uh, this action plan are intended to uh, contribute to the work of their own organization from a, a youth uh, perspective. So please click on the link. The act, the the um, whiteboard is now open. Um, great is. Simona, are you sharing this your screen or do I yes. share mine? No, okay, no, you're no, sharing your sharing screen. Mine. Okay, yes. great. So Simona is also sharing the screen, but if you can please click on the great, thank you. If you can click on the whiteboard, you have two options. You um thank you, Simona. Can you can you show the options while I talk? You can um draw something or you can add a text. So the drawing is uh, exactly that little icon with a pencil. You can go for visual uh, communication if you prefer, um, or you can add a text. As you can see under the option button, you have an add text um, um, icon, and there you can write a text and you can decide to write in a, about opportunities or challenges. We have around 10 minutes for completing this exercise and um, and then we will close the session with some comments on the on the whiteboard and on the um, session as such so please go to the whiteboard and start drawing or writing i will keep uh, following the process as, uh, as you've write, but please start doing so. The question is, um, what are the challenges and the opportunities that you see, that you identify in youth access to land in the Asia region? And um, yes, you can write or, or draw. Um, the 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 writing option uh, is can you can you show it again, Simona, please? Okay, so you can see in the screen on the screen you click on options and the third one is add text and you will have a little square text. If you prefer to draw, feel free to do so.
So, can you can you zoom a little bit, Simona? Okay, great. So it is interesting that we we okay we have um, some a lot of comments about the importance of trusting and giving space to uh, youth and youth organization. Um, the challenge that the first challenge identified is that there is an exclusion of youth from decision making process in many many levels. Um, there is also limited knowledge or awareness of what uh, what the youth um, uh, does in the process of making claims. Um, so it, there is a need to give more space and trust. Also, it is important to start from school. So to start educating on climate issues from, from school and providing access to resources, technology included. It is interesting uh, um, that uh, we someone included COVID um, in the increasing um, in the increasing importance of land uh, for other issues, which and the importance of the change that is taking place in the mindset of young people about agrarian reform. So if we have to. Um, to uh, group them, we could say that uh, there is a discussion about education of youth and providing tools to them. Then there is a matter of the importance of including young people in decision-making. And, uh, and another thing is the importance of how young people are uh, changing their mind with regard to land. And so they are getting more and more involved. And this involvement is, uh, needs to be, uh, uh, needs to be uh, made visible. I see someone who wrote that we need to support initiative of young girls. As a gender justice person, I cannot appreciate it more. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, indeed, it's important to include young uh, girls in the process and and uh, make their voice heard and support their agency. Um, there is something interesting. Um, I don't know if you can move that sentence, uh, Simona, from the family support. Um, uh, can you can you move it close to the lantern security of youth where it says succession in the. Uh, in brackets, because I think that you, thank you very much. I think that you are connected. Um, it is important, it is, uh, it is crucial to involve um, the family dynamics. So education, family dynamics, community dynamics and decision-making process. Uh, Um, I, um, I just, okay, there is a hand raised from Assam and uh, while you keep writing, um, uh, my colleague Andita made me notice that there was a question in the chat, which I missed. Uh, apologies for that. The question for was from KPA and was about whether there are any countries that give a strong support. Yes, just one second. There was a question whether there is any country that give a strong support for agrarian reform agenda from a youth perspective. I think the question was for to Maylin. So I would take ask some question first and then I would ask Maylin and answer to the question. Assam, please. Assam? Hello. Yes, please. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, how can we uh, build up our uh, indigenous students and the youth <coughs> in different fields? As because of in Assam, we are in an interior place. Our different indigenous youths and the guards, they have not get any chance. As because of the government of India 
and the Gupta of Assam. They have no any policy for the student and the youth, especially for the indigenous uh, youths and the uh, girls and the boys. So in this matter, how can you help us and how can we proceed in this uh, subject? Hello. Yes, please. Th thank you very much. So the question was related to yeah. indigenous. Um, the question is about in the uh, how to support indigenous um, indigenous youth, and uh, um, I may, maybe Krishna, do you have any any comment on that? As you work a lot in indigenous networks, do you want to comment on that? Maybe Krishna. Krishna, are you still here? Okay, apparently Krishna is not here. So I would ask Maylin to comment on the question with regard to countries that give a strong support uh, for the agrarian reform agenda from a youth perspective. And then I'll double check if Krishna is still with us because it seems we lost, sir. Um, Maylin, do you want to answer to the question about in, about indigenous, uh, sorry, the question about uh, agrarian reform and, and youth? We lost Maylin too? It seems we lost Maylin too. Um, Elisabetta, can I answer the question? This yes, is please, Esther please. from AFA because I think Mylene is not here. Yes, please she go ahead. Has lost connection. Thank you very much. Uh, with regards to the question on how do we okay. motivate youth and agrarian reform, I think in every in in a community where there is um, a struggle for land rights, uh, usually these are uh, led by by the old ones, the senior ones, right? But uh, the 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 young the young people can be encouraged to be part of all the activities of the organization who is defending their rights to land. We have very concrete experience in the Philippines, for example, when uh, a, a group called Sumilao Farmers were defending their rights to ancestral lands. They 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 made they did um, a long march, like a one thousand uh, kilometer march from their village to Manila, mm -hmm. and uh, around fifty people walked from the village, their village to Manila, and among those fifty people were young farmers. And they were included in all the training, in all the preparation, in all the policy dialogues that have happened during the march. So basically, we, we call for uh, farmers organizations, indigenous communities to make a space, to make a space for their young people so that they can participate actively engage in the struggle for land of their parents and of their elders. And when land is distributed, then they also benefit from the land distribution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm afraid that as we lost to Krishna, I don't have an actual answer to ask some questions. Uh, what I can um, I wonder whether Rudolf, do you, do you want to comment by any chance on the indigenous people? Ah, there is um, there is another comment from. Uh, sorry, I only see indigenous people's pact, but I don't see your name. But your hand is raised, so please go ahead. Uh, I cannot. Yes, I cannot. Yes, yes, yes. You. <laughs> I, I Sorry, I cannot see uh, the. Okay, yes, please go ahead. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, Madam, the concept of uh, uh, indigenous people is not cleared by our Indian government. Uh, 
do do they sign the uh, un undrip? Uh, because according to Indian government concept, all Indian peoples are uh, indigenous. Uh, due, due to this, the peoples of our our state, basically our state was uh, during the time of our, uh, before in independence and, and before the colonial era of British, it is called Mungdon Sunkham. It was ruled by our kings from Thai home community. According to this, the name Assam was then called Mungdon Sunkham. So I am representing as a co coordinator of our organization, Mungdun Sun Kham. So, yesterday I have also raised the question that the fund allocated in the name of indigenous people was uh, uh, falsely utilized by our Assam and Gopt of India. So this year also, uh, the Asia Development Bank have sanctioned about 1,000 crore in the name of Indigenous Peoples Plan. Again, the Government of India and our Assam government try to make the peoples of other parts of our country as in indigenous. But according to the UNDRIP, according to the concept of UNDRIP, the peoples who lived before the colonial era is, are called indigenous. But due to the process of the misprocess of Indian government and our Assam government, our indigenous peoples are going to lose their political identity, social identity, and their land right. So our fertile land is now under the Pe uh, peoples of the other parts of the country, and gradually we are also we are also lost our political power, social power, and economic power. So, I wa uh, again we want to represent in the stakeholders meeting, which is held between the Gopt of India representative of AIPP and our indigenous people. So, I want to know how can we represent our people in the next stakeholder meeting, which will be held, and, uh, and your suggestion, how it will help to regain our social, economic, political right, and what will be your suggestions? Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Um, Mirgul, do you want to answer to this question? Um, uh, uh, hi, yes, I uh, we remember your question and you also was asking first day and yesterday we, and that day we were proposing that it is better to participate in the yesterday session that we were talking about the indigenous yesterday all day, I mean, entire sessions, yeah, so uh, that's a good question. Thanks for your interest and thanks for coming today as well. So maybe my suggestion here will be that we will take note on your question and your request how we can work more closer and how we can collaborate to raise this uh, interest, I mean, to raise the uh, questions and these challenges to the another people in the another platforms as well. So maybe we can give some, I don't know, 
definition, what is the use and what is the indigenous that you already like uh, asked it yesterday also. And maybe we can also link you with our uh, members uh, of ILC Asia as uh, AIPP that they have, I'm sure that uh, members in India as well. So maybe we can later link you with them and we can come with the more detailed discussions with the, your request to move on this, yeah? We can understand all the challenges that you are facing as indigenous there and that government are not acknowledging your rights there. So maybe it is better to discuss at the ground level to go with the more detailed discussions with the interested people there. So that's must, my answer for now. I'm sorry if I cannot fulfill it, I mean. Thank you, Mirgul. Um, is there any other comment that uh, anyone wants to make on any of the question that was uh, raised? Sorry, I disactivated my audio, my mistake. Any of the speaker who wants to add anything on what was uh, asked? Because if this is not the case, as you can see from the whiteboard, um, I try to group the, um, the topics that emerged so that this can actually serve to our discussion during the, um, during the uh, Global and Forum um, Youth. And what you see in, uh, um, in yellow is related, so it's the most um, positive element. So it's related to um, to the fact that there is, as we saw today. Oh, sorry, there is a sound. You want to add something? You raise your hand again. Hello. Yes, please. Regarding the indigenous people land rights in our Assam, in Tinsukia district. The Oil India and ONGC, they have done different misdeeds. They also, uh, by uh, some uh, other way, uh, in the in our Diblu Soikwa Reserve and reserves under reserve, they are uh, established a um, uh, oil, oil exploration and field. But uh, in original map, in our uh, deep blue soil reserve, uh, uh, there is no any uh, scope uh, for uh, excavation of oil. But under some pressure, they, uh, they uh, the Oil India separate the area from reservation area and cut it. And they uh, excavate uh, the oil and by this, the uh, oil field and oil uh, uh, organization uh, for this uh, burning uh, place, uh, the area and burn down different uh, animals and the, uh, our preservable different and uh, uh, orchids, they are totally destroyed. So our in our uh, Assam, uh, the ecosystem is completely disturbed. So in this way, uh, Supreme Court also uh, direct not to do this, but they have not uh, followed the direction of Supreme Court also. This is the situation. So the indigenous uh, people's rights are completely uh, torn by this uh, government organization. So when the uh, indigenous people also uh, protest in this regard, and they, they call police and they arrest and torture our indigenous boys and the girls and the people. So uh, they still, they are not getting any compensation also. Uh, this is the situation. So the indigenous people, how can they stand when the government is against the indigenous people by any way? They are always troubling, always trouble the indigenous people targeting. This is the uh, situation and uh, it is very sorrowful to say that the government of India also voted in favor of the UNRIP, but they are not implementing it. 
it is also very sorrowful that they are not declared till today who are the indigenous of Assam. It is also very disgusting. Martinez Cobo's uh, definition of indigenous people accepted by the world as a whole. We, the indigenous people of Assam, 100 organizations in, in, include in our Assam San Milita Mahasanga. We, we are the confederation of indigenous peoples. So we wholeheartedly support the Martinez Cobo's uh, definition of indigenous people. Elizabeth, and can I? In, in that situation, so uh, yes, how can we proceed as government completely against the indigenous people? So please, so uh, kindly advise us and how can and you and the uh, uh, world indigenous groups help us by which we can um, we can uh, retain our own rights, please. Yes, thank you. Th there was someone who wanted to make a last comment on this. Uh, on this, I heard a voice. Elisabetta, can I? Yes, you can, but I don't know. Who no, no, it, it was me. But now the the Samita is the, from Assam. That fellow has it, said that. It, no, you have that. So, so uh, I, I suggest that. Uh, if there's some brief, uh, and, uh, he can just comment on the chat box and then the RCU team and the Asia Sharing Committee or the NACE India or APP, AIPP can consider and then take the issue rather than uh, discussing here as per the time, no? But thank yes. you. That, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Dinesh. Yes. Um, well, as we are already um, close to the closing time, if you look at the whiteboard and yes, um, there is a comment in the chat. Um, thank you, Voy Fernan Wainubitara Fernan. I cannot see the full name. Sorry. Uh, you. you. Okay. From thank Indonesia. You. Yeah. Hello. Yes, thank you for the for the comment. It was very interesting, and yes, we took it into consideration in a whiteboard. If you look at the whiteboard, um, I tried to um, well. First of all, this whiteboard will uh, contribute to definitely to the identification of key areas of work. What I tried to do, and I think it also responds quite well to what has been shared and what has emerged during this session. So, what I tried to do uh, in here was to group. Um, some some key elements. Uh, one key element that uh, is a positive one that clearly emerged both from your comments and from the discussion is that there is more and more um, youth involvement in the fight for land rights and for climate change and against climate change. In some cases, we don't know enough about what is what exists out there when it's taking place, but there is more and more youth commitment. The discussion on climate change is getting more and more popular among youth, even in contexts where there is, enough, there is not enough information. And uh, there is also um, increasing awareness about the centrality of land and the role that youth plays on, on that side. On the other hand, however, the main challenge that emerged can be um, linked to the lack of uh, presence, um, sufficient presence of a young organization of youth in the um, in the political arena, so uh, and which can uh, can mean that there is a lack of financial support, but also of political support, a political space for um, youth organizations to uh, to make their uh, their claims, and in some cases this is also linked to lack of access to land and, 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 and support from uh, families for, for youth who uh, are in, in agriculture. So it is that there is definitely a need to um, work on this challenge that is linked to this political and, and uh, community space that is available and is made available for uh, and by young uh, movements, youth movements. So it is important for the organizations to give space to uh, young leaders, to give space to youth organizations, to give space to young um, farmers. And how to do that, how to, how to reinforce this space. On the one hand, it's a matter of commitments, commitment of organizations, commitment of families, commitment of the political space. And on the other hand, it is necessary to um, support 
youth uh, movements, both in terms of uh, providing capacity. So as we, as, as we read in the whiteboard, education is in on land rights, support to young girls, we, uh, to, to young girls um, movements is needed. Um, access to technology is needed and specific trainings are needed. So I hope that in a way the ILC uh, Youth Fellowship Program tries to respond partly to these needs, but it is clear that there is more need for education and training and, and support and for um, reciprocal um, uh, exchange. There, was, there were also some um, drawing in here. Well, actually one was mine, the, the trees that connect uh, was uh, was mine, but there is also and there is also a few other um, nice and interesting uh, um, drawing that are about the connection between listening and speaking. So we need voice and we need ears that are able and willing to to uh, listen to this voice. And well, definitely we we need land justice now. Um, I hope that this. Uh, um, uh, that this uh, session was uh, exciting for you. I hope that this session would uh, actively contribute to the, uh, the, the global and forum use and to the work that um, ILC Asia is doing in, uh, with, uh, with ILC members in, in the region uh, to give space and voice and build upon the experience of our amazing um, young leaders. Uh, I don't know if there is any further comments, maybe from Mirgul, uh, from, from, uh, from, from Asia. Do you want to say a last, very last word? Or do we close on that fact that we want land justice now? That's great, yeah. Thank you, Elisabetta. Uh, maybe I can just continue with the next session just to give more some... Uh, okay, so thank you, thank you everyone. I couldn't hear Mirgul anymore. Mirgul? No, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, Mirgul. Kunduz, that's uh, uh, the hand raised. Kunduz, do you have a comment? Sorry, no. <laughs> okay. Mirgul, do you want to try your mic again to move to the next session? Can you hear me? Yes, we can now hear you. So I would like to thank one more time the speakers as I'm leaving you to the next session. So on, on behalf of ILC uh, One Team and the uh, ILC Fellowship Program, and uh, it was a pleasure for me to moder moderate this session. Um, and uh, I... I really want to thank all the, the five speakers who shared their amazing experience with us. If I'm not mistaken, this recording, this session would be available some, somehow on YouTube. So I have to leave now, but uh, I leave you with uh, Mirgul and the other colleagues from the regional coordination in Asia. And uh, I wish you um, very uh, good sessions, um, very good next session. Thank you very much for this enriching uh, exchange. Super, thank you. Thank you very much, dear Elisabetta, for being with us and moderating for the great moderation as well. So I hope to see you all in uh, GLF Youth yeah? next year in person, I hope. So if you allow me, dear friends, I would like just to share some more information about the upcoming GLF use, what is expected there. And I'm also happy just to announce that today, ILC Asia also announced the call for proposal for that uh, GLF use in Jordan. Yeah? So please check your emails, check our website and go and apply to this and come with us in Jordan. So I would like to share my screen now. Um, I hope uh, you can see now it, yeah. So uh, you see that we discussed a lot about the use and use access to the land and the challenges in Asia, what our youth are facing and the 
almost some solutions are suggested by our members and our participants today and the great speakers that we have. So we at ILC Asia also did some short uh, analysis what we have and we conducted like preliminary research just to highlight the past and current uh, work activities what our members doing in the field of uh, land related activities any and we found almost more than 15 members are working on the land issues and they're committed to continue their work so we are happy and also we have our use platform as CBI seven years so maybe in the future we can grow up into the Asia Land Academy or I don't know uh, Asia Youth Academy or let's see how it will work and how we will grow there so but we are happy that we have this ILC leadership program now with us uh, so uh, we selected uh, to this program to participate some people and this is really I'm sure and I would like just to encourage you participate actively there it is just a starting year for us and the next year, I'm sure that we will also announce another cycle of this program. So this is a really good chance to uh, young people from our network, also the other, I mean, who is non-ILC members as well. So just to join and become, say, your uh, today's leadership uh, word. And you can just also contribute to today's action that we are doing together. Yeah? So also within this program, we will provide some collective grant funds. Uh, for this year, it is up to 100 uh, USD that our fellows will uh, decide later what kind of project they would like to implement in their uh, communities. So some special emphasis on the promoting of the women's uh, topic leadership will be there as well. So in Asia, we selected uh, six fellows from India, Indonesia, Bangladesh and Philippines, as you can see some names here. And uh, so I hope that uh, this all people will continue their fellowship uh, program and it will come with their great uh, projects to implement in their communities. And they are now also working, starting to work to draft their action plans. Yeah? And the, the action plans will be uh, implemented within the next six uh, months. So let's talk about the ILC first global uh, land forum use. Yeah, this is today event expected uh, next year in Jordan. Uh, ILC plan to bring around 100 young leaders from our globe and uh, uh, almost uh, we are thinking about 50 young leaders from um, global and the 50 young leaders from Jordan to join us. So there will be uh, a lot of uh, activities, including the debates, uh, other different interactive sessions, training for you. And uh, during the GLF, you will be also able to exchange uh, knowledges and the sessions. They will be taken into account that also size, like uh, we are trying, I mean, due to these COVID circumstances, we are also trying to communicate with the Jordan government to bring as much as possible, uh, I mean, more people to meet in, uh, in person there. So we would like just to facilitate young people access to information and communication through social media. So please follow us, follow our account and the website and just come to say your also your words there, yeah? To bring your uh, um, key messages from your communities to be heard by others during the uh, use GLF uh, in Jordan. So we are talking a lot about the Jordan. This is the forum that we are each year, I, uh, each three year ILC is organizing, but due to this COVID situation, unfortunately it was postponed, but we are happy to announce that we will meet anyway next year in Jordan. This is the really unique also platform that to continue like today's last three days, we were discussing about the Asia Land Forum. Now we can discuss about the Global Land Forum in Jordan next year and we have all a lot of uh, ex despite of our ILC network and members we have also some partners who will be there and they all we are united for the land rights here yeah? 
So this is really good chance to continue and uh, unite people to build a new partnership, new network. And uh, this event will also uh, open for others, not only ILC members. So it is really like multi-stakeholder platform and organizations will be there. So good chance, good opportunity for each of us to be there. And the, as usual, most of our ILC members know that uh, what is the GLF, what is the Global Land Forum. So there will be a lot of different activities like field visit. Uh, also, as it is uh, organized in uh, Jordan, we will have a special Yemena Day and also network forums like uh, there we are going to also announce about the ILC Awards uh, winners that we have this good tradition. Each time when we are meeting, we are giving our appreciations and they are highlighting some great achievements of our members there. So some breakout sessions also will be organized, ideas fairs that you each of you can contribute also. And we hope that we will also have chance to meet and organize assembly of members there and regional some discussions as well. So and the Talking about the breakout sessions, the thematic sessions so far that we are agreed to have during the GLF, it's about the next uh, six uh, breakouts, that climate change, rural use, that you can see that rural, I mean, use topic also there, yeah? Use topic is actual for us as well. For the next nine year strategy too, it is a, one of the priority areas. So I can commit from the IOC Asia side that we will continue work on the youth priorities uh, to land. So partnership building, peace building, the uh, women's equal rights also important breakout sessions during the GLF. And the important thing that I would like just to highlight here and to bring your attention, that we will call for these breakout sessions, uh, call for proposal and the ideas fairs, as well as the nomination submissions for the ILC award. Uh, uh, almost next, uh, next week, we will be uh, uh, announcing this. The deadline most, uh, for most of this will be December 2021. Please uh, make sure that you will not miss this opportunity and you will contribute to the breakout sessions, to the ideas fairs, and you will nominate them, your respectful colleagues or members, other organization partners, to be highlighted during the ILC award. Also, we will open the registration for the GLF once the assembly of members it will done after the 19th of November. And also in 11th of November, we plan Asia uh, Regional Assembly. So 16 to 18, we will have assembly of members. After that, we will open with the registration and you will have more opportunity to look at the speakers, breakout sessions. You will get more details on the GLF in our website. Also, just would like to highlight that for the first time ever, we are organizing this GLF use before our opening the GLF in general, yeah, I mean that 100 people from all over the world will be joining us there and they contribute to this youth agenda in ILC. So ILC, as I told you today, we announced our call for proposals to participate in Global Land Forum Youth. Uh, deadline is the 10th of December. Please do not miss this opportunity and apply there. So thank you very much. If you have any questions regarding to the GLF and GLF use, we are still here. We can continue to uh, respond to you if it is necessary. I hope no question here. Yeah? Or do we still have questions? Just would like to encourage you to participate actively. Do not miss this opportunity. Really unique opportunity and unique place will be there. And to follow the chat, my colleagues, uh, Anvita, she is sharing our website and the call for proposal for this Asia use. So please. Yes, the General Assembly for this year for ILC, I can see some questions in the chat. Um, assembly of members, we are meeting uh, again online. 
the 16th to 18th November this year. We will be almost in two weeks' time. They're one of the main uh, important uh, items in our agenda just to endorse and the, our uh, new strategy, new ILC strategy for the next nine years. And uh, I'm sure that in the closing part, my colleague, Mike, we have uh, Mike, uh, director of the IOC Secretariat, he can speak a little bit more about the strategy, but I can commit from our side that youth topic is as a priority, it is included in the next IOC strategy there. Any any questions in the chat that I missed? One more question from Darm. Yeah, Darm asking about the November and December. I think it should be December. No. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry. Yes, to <laughs> Sorry to jump in. I just want to respond to Darm's question. Uh, yes, Darm, so we just circulated today the call for application for ILC members in Asia to participate in the Global Land Forum Youth. And you are right, the deadline to apply is on November 10th. So okay. I am sorry, going... that's my mistake then. <laughs> I okay. will share one more time on the chat box the link. Uh, to the detailed call. Thanks, thanks, Darm, for the clarification and thanks to Andita. Yes, Miss Saron, youth from Cambodia, it's also open. It's open for all Asian leaders, yeah, young leaders who would like to uh, apply to this. And there already we have some uh, application format. So please uh, follow the link that Andita shared it and open that application and you can submit your proposals to us. So if you don't have any other questions, maybe we need to move just to the next session or what I took from this today's uh, youth session for myself that uh, Chopons told us here yeah, that we are not the leaders from future and we are leaders today. Yeah? So please act today, try to be uh, involved in the all decision-making processes in your communities at regional, mm -hmm. national, global level. And uh, let's make sure that we can hear each other. Yeah, yeah. We can hear from our youth and you also can hear from others. And uh, from IOC side, we can just ensure that we will provide some platforms to you to communicate, advocate, and uh, get more knowledge and share your experience with other people. If no other questions, I'm done <laughs> for this. No questions in the chat, I don't see. So can we close the session on use then for today? Thanks for all participants. Yes, please. I um, give a floor to my colleague, Andita, to go with the closing part, yeah? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mirgul. So thank you everyone for tuning in to the whole three days of the 2021 Asia Land Forum. We have reached to, uh, we have reached the closing of the forum now. Uh, we are happy to be able to share the, uh, this, this exciting event with you. And uh, we are grateful for your insight as well on so many different topics on land and uh, the interconnected issues with land, like youth, indigenous peoples, women, uh, and local communities. So uh, I am here to just facilitate the closing of the forum, and I will give the floor to some of our members from ILC uh, and also the ILC Secretariat team as well uh, to give their closing remarks for one last time. The first one is... Uh, 
I don't think I need to introduce him anymore. Uh, 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 the first closing remarks will come from Michael Taylor, the director of ILC Secretariat in Rome. Uh, Michael is from Botswana uh, and he has been, his passion for land rights has grown for so many years. Uh, so I will give the floor to Mike and uh, you have five minutes, Mike, for your closing remarks. Thank you, Andita. Thank you, Margot. I'll take less than five minutes, uh, but I, I do want to say just a, a few words to you all as, as dear friends and members of, uh, of ILC Asia. And the first is uh, what an honor it's been to um, work alongside our member AIPP in co-hosting uh, this conference. Um, so to Gamma and the team, um, thank you. Uh, we've been privileged to co-host this meeting with you. You have some really excellent um, team members. I've been super impressed with the level of uh, um, moderation. Um, by the young people from uh, from AIPP alongside alongside uh, Mergrel and and her team, so thank you. Uh, and this is not this is not just a, a polite thank you, but it's a real thank you from the ILC that we together are building for the future. Um, you know that we start a new strategy next year, and at the center of the strategy is the mission of ILC to shift power, to shift power to the people's organizations uh, that are among our membership that directly represent land users. Uh, so we talk about people's organizations being organizations that belong to indigenous peoples, to pastoralists, to women, to young people. Uh, and, and so we want to be, we want to build the ILC of the future as a, as a common platform, a collectively owned platform, but one on which the voices of people's organizations are heard above all else. And so I think this is a, this is what we've done together with AIPP has been a great uh, example of building where we want to go as, uh, as IOC. I've really enjoyed the forum. I think, you know, just to reflect on a few standout moments for me, uh, hearing the voices of young people uh, today uh, as, as leaders, as we were reminded, not just leaders of tomorrow, as we uh, old people often say, but already the leaders of today, uh, especially in the context of climate change. Uh, I will be next week at the COP. Uh, some of our members will be there. You know that, um, for example, Hijaba, uh, and others will be there as part of uh, representing the interests of pastoralist organizations uh, in RLC at the COP. And we need to make our work relevant to the global fight against climate change. Uh, the world is waking up uh, and we need to show that what we do on land rights is a pathway out of the climate crisis. Um, and so this is really, really urgent. And, and I know the young people uh, are at the lead of, of, of um, the climate struggle and the young people in the land rights movement uh, are also taking that struggle ahead on land rights and, uh, and on climate. I also, I was very touched by listening um, to, to the story of, uh, of, I'm sorry, I forgot her name, but they're from Malaysia. Uh, talking about how her community land had been taken, how people had been left without their homes, uh, and and how they worked together to stop this company from dispossessing uh, their community. You know, these are the stories that that so many of our members have, and that so many people that we work alongside can tell. And and as we think about how ILC can be a platform for the voices of people to be heard in the world. These are the voices that need to be heard. These are the stories that need to be heard. These are the stories we need to get out to COP26 and to the other uh, important um, global events uh, in which the, real, the voices of real people are often not heard. So, so this is our mission. Uh, together, I also I also think of the session on land and conflict on the day on on day one and and listening um, to some of our members uh, from Landwatch Asia bring very strong um, numbers and facts about conflict, about uh, dispossession, about threats against defenders, and about killings of defenders. Those numbers are powerful because those numbers. Um, in the way that we present them are not just numbers, they're about people and, and they help us 
they help the world to understand the scale of, of the challenges that we face. And that's why data is really an important part of the new strategy of ILC. And, uh, and I appreciate very much the great work that members in Asia have already been doing on data and, and that we look forward to working together. Uh, to develop that uh, further into the future. So there's there's a few, uh, a few for me, some of the highlights of, of this meeting. It's been a, a great pleasure uh, to, to join you for when I have been able to join you, which unfortunately hasn't been every session, but those that I've been able to join, I really have uh, enjoyed. Congratulations again to Mergrel and the team. Congratulations to the AIPP team for your great work as, as well. Um, thank you to the steering committee of Asia. I can see Dinesh. Uh, is here and others have been listening in for for your um, great leadership uh, in the region uh, and um, we just wish you uh, the best until we see you face to face in Jordan um, you know we've all struggled during this period of interacting online we're people we need we need personal contact and so it's been great to see each other so often online but we need to see each other face to face and so Jordan will be a very special event for us. Um, the GLF youth, as you've just heard, will be will be a, a, a groundbreaking bringing together of young people. Uh, but I'm very very pleased that we will be seeing each other uh, face to face in Jordan in about uh, in about five months, and I look forward to that very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I would just like to move on to our next speaker, uh, Gam Shimrai from the Asia Indigenous Peoples Pact uh, or AIPP. Again, ILC Asia is very thankful to have AIPP this year to co-organize the Asia Land Forum. Uh, it's been really a great pleasure to work with AIPP together. So Gam, I give you the floor for your closing remarks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Andita. It has been indeed a great pleasure working with all of you. Um, first of all, yeah, I also would really like to thank, and Mike says not just thanking, but really mean to thank, <laughs> the same way as Mike is putting, to the governing body of ILC, the steering committee, and of course the leadership of Mike as well. AIBP, uh, sorry, ILC has been a learning organization and there has been progressive movements towards linking better with the organic movement on the ground. And I think that is really remarkable. And perhaps without the leadership of this ILC, <clears throat> we have been guiding, maybe we will not have been here as to where we are today. So I'm really thankful uh, uh, for that. And also, yes, the ILC, uh, RCU uh, from Asia, Birgul and her team has been really excellent, flexible, open, and of course, also very innovative in sharing ideas when we get stuck. So that really made also easy for AIBB to be cooperating. So I think that contribution has come from everywhere and that is making this uh, a success. Um, just also a few takeaway from my side in terms of this uh, Asia Land Forum. First thing is that, of course, I'm also definitely quite impressed with the progress we have made in terms of the kind of presentation and the quality as Mike was also was observing, for example, on the land conflict or on the land territories and resources and the kind of good practices that also is coming from the ground and that kind of inspiring stories that women, uh, youth, uh, and also movements, grassroots movements, uh, movements in general are actually taking, out, taking us this, towards this, uh, the goal that we want to achieve. So it's been really inspiring. And I think evidence-based advocacy and campaign has been one of our objective. And I see that during this Asia Land Forum, we seem to be making a lot of progress in that direction. So I must congratulate um, this to uh, all of you and also to ourselves for putting forward that um, work in, a, uh, in an effort, which is not easy, of course, but we have made the effort and we are moving towards that. I think that has been remarkable. Also, yes, the women and youth, even though there are problems and issues I do believe that the strength of women and youth within the ILC is growing. Uh, and that is quite also again remarkable because the women and youth must become the strength of the ILC uh, in the near future. Uh, and perhaps we are in the 
right direction. And I just want to end by saying that, of course, we have spoken about this horizontal inequality. One of the root causes is the issue of land deprivation or land rights. You know? But also, if we are able to fight this, this is also the core issue towards democratization uh, in a society where society can thrive and where there'll be more equity and equality amongst uh, all of us. Um, so I think uh, it's been very inspiring. And last but not the least is that I really want to thank the interpreters. And I also would like to say that I'm really happy to see that this time we also have the sign language interpreter. So this is also a step forward for ILC and I hope we'll continue to keep up the good work. So I'm really, really thankful to all of you, including the participants, because the participants in the end are the more important aspect of it to make the ripple effect from the takeaway that we have uh, made from this uh, Global Land Forum. So thank you very much to all of you again, once again, thank you. Thank you, Gam, for your kind words. Uh, I think I can uh, say this on behalf of ILC Asia, that of course we are confident that there will definitely be future collaborations between ILC Asia and IAPP. Uh, in many areas, knowledge exchange, capacity building, and many others. So thank you again, Gam. Uh, next, I would like to invite uh, the next speaker, uh, Dinesh Rabari. Dinesh is uh, a member of the steering committee of ILC Asia. Uh, he is also an advocate of uh, pastoralism in uh, India, in Gujarat in particular. Uh, so, Dinesh, uh, I will give the floor to you for your closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Andita. Uh, thank you very much. I hope uh, uh, because we are talking about indigenous people and I'm still in with the pastoralists in a village. So uh, feel free to say that if you cannot hurt me. But really, I like that in 2014, uh, I joined as a youth and then me and Anish is thinking that the, why there is a no youth in this, uh, India or other uh, and now today I felt that <laughs> now we have to take the withdrawal and the other people needs to take the leadership. And me, Mike, and uh, I think Anish has done that job so uh, that we are withdrawing and then other people will come. So uh, it's amazing session for me. And then this has happened because of the leadership of whole Asia. And that uh, always I, I say in my team also that the ILC is given a space to uh, giving opportunity to other people. No? So yeah, we, we have not taken uh, 16 years. We have taken only six years. So I will start from that. And then six years we are finishing. Uh, I have just joined some of the session and uh, uh, it's really, uh, uh, we have to say thanks to the AIPP. And I know that in 2014, my first meeting with the AIPP in Thailand and then the, the AIPP has done with the whole RCU and it's uh, like, to connect people with the technology and with the timing. No, this is only happen when there is a professionalism and the people will come together. That's I, I felt uh, in that whole area. But uh, through the throughout the discussion, I see the we are focusing in SDGs uh, to sort out the seven um, um, crisis uh, to to uh, to uh, uh, focus on the seven crisis of uh, globally, which is we had seen that on economic crisis, climate and food, peace and violence to stop the violence and the poverty, which is really we have discussed in a three days. Some of the session like Mike said that we have joined, I also joined some of the session because of the, some of the schedule. Regarding the data of, uh, uh, availability, uh, 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 like for the indigenous people, pastoralists or women and youth, uh, we can have, and that is we already discussed about that but needs to focus like on a population of the indigenous community or pastoralists uh, on their land availability or in the migration pattern that is we really need to that we have discussed but we need to think more about uh, that is I think. Land conflict, uh, I think India has lots of uh, land grabbing projects are coming and then uh, whole over the Asia, uh, South Asia is affecting from that and uh, really we have an opportunity. I think other colleagues has discussed about the land conflict and. Uh, the land cleft conflict data we are not using for the policy, which is uh, really needs to as a coalition and as a leadership up to the 2022. We have to think with the Mrigul and teams at how as an Asia we can focus on that. 
I, I just have some few, uh, which is uh, if we can use for the Jordan uh, uh, discussion on the, particularly on IPs. And when we talk about IPs and passwords, I feel that I, 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 I'm swimming, swimming with the, like the AIPP organizing, then the passwords organization definitely will swimming with the, them. So really this is, we are hosting like the 2000s, uh, uh, 19 in Udaipur. So similar feeling now I have. So some members have joined there and then it's really great for me. But um, now needs to think about to uh, uh, build a pressure group for the like, at the global level, we have a com commitment, uh, community-based uh, organization. Uh, I am the one of the member of that and the ILC has given that space, but that is we needed at the Asia level that you know the, how the group uh, will uh, uh, talk on behalf of, uh, as a pressure group of the com this IPs and pastoralists and women. Uh, also, uh, Asia's voice, voice at uh, Asia's voice at uh, uh, I, I felt that it will be at, at the UN level. O always, I discuss that we need a space. The Asia will like Latino and Africa has a more voice. Uh, so Asian people needs to be in an ILC platform and other you know organization. And then uh, about the leadership of uh, the in a cope also will I think Mike is there and. Uh, Mizaba is there, but we need to discuss about the leadership of the like youth and and the peoples of pastoralist group or I IPs in that particular focus. But really, congratulate the Mrigul Harafig and Dita Raiza and uh, AIPP team. Agam, particularly because you are there, so uh, really I enjoy a lot. And even many colleagues from India, they they like this whole three days. Thank you very much, Mrigul and the team. Thank you very much, Dinesh. Uh, it's so happy to hear that you have been an active member of ILC Asia for so many years and many more. <laughs> Our last but not least speaker is the regional coordinator of ILC Asia, Mirgul. Please, I give you the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dianjit, and thanks to all our participants. And I don't know from whom should I start. I really would like to thank each of you for your really active and great participation for all your comments and recommendations. So thanks to AIPP for being co-host for this year with us. Thanks uh, for the speakers also to all our participants, interpreters who were supporting us during these three days. That was really bit maybe difficult for some technicalities that we have uh, almost six different Asian languages, also sign language that we included today for this time, uh, as uh, recommended by AIPP, thanks for the great suggestion. I think that's also good to be more inclusive in the social media as well when we are all, like uh, meeting online, I mean virtually. So that was the good opportunity for us. Uh, I hope that I would like to say that see you next time in person in Jordan. So main things that I would like to highlight from here that we took that uh, no SDGs without cooperation and strong partnership engagement with others. And that's why our topic, the main title of this uh, EA Asia Land Forum was also securing land rights for achieving of these SDGs. Yeah? And uh, we all understand that uh, land is based for all of us and touching all aspects of our lives, starting from food that we have and the, our another sustainable livelihood that is impossible without SDGs, without indigenous people, youth and women. We need to put all our efforts together to save the green and healthy planet for our young generation. And important to have strong young leaders who will continue all our efforts to secure land rights for each of us. Yeah? And, uh, and today the voice of youth, women, pastoralists, indigenous peoples are crucial and we need to hear from each other and deliver key messages to advocate jointly at national, regional and global level. So deliver key, key notes to the grassroots as well and hear from them as well. It is important that was highlighted also by Mike that grassroots driven organization also important within the ILC network. And also in the next strategy, we are putting more focus there that we are, will talk about the CBOs and grassroots organizations as well. So together with uh, you all later after the assembly of members in November, we will start work on our detailed engagement plan and strategy that we uh, set new areas of work and strengthen the current our efforts and initiative that we have already. 
I also want team uh, already working with the members and the platforms to ensure this smooth transition to the next strategy and the RCU team will continue all this work with you on uh, to the land uh, as uh, after the agenda uh, 2030 where we could report on our collaborative efforts and it could show the impact of our power as a network ILC. Yeah, I hope very much that we can report there and we will have all you on board with us till that time. So thank you very much once more. Nothing to it, I don't know, sorry <laughs> if I miss someone. Thanks to all moderators, speakers, interpreters. Thanks for each of our members who contributed to this agenda of Asia Land Forum this year. And really see you next year in Jordan. Maybe, I don't know, it is, yes, yeah, time to say goodbye. Official part, let's say it is over. And if you would like, just in, I don't know, even we are meeting virtually, just open your videos just one more time. Another five minutes we can spend just as an open mic, if you would like, if you wish just to say hello again. <laughs> I don't know. And thanks to our Asia Steering Committee. Sorry, Dinesh. Thanks to Devi. Thanks to Dinesh, Ms. Charia, Elvira, who was supporting this drafting of this agenda. Yeah? Thanks for all your support that you did for us during the last years. And we hope that we will come with the next steering committee also, who will be strongly committed as current one and to continue support RCU team with the next ILC Asia strategy. Not only Asia, but the ILC global strategy there. So it's really nice to see all your faces. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everybody. Great to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Спасибо. Рахмат. Thanks. Bye bye. Спасибо. Рахмат. Трима каси. I remember. Bye, Arabic. Bye. Bye, Mohan. Bye. Bye. Mohan, bye. Bye, Megul, Amrita, and everyone in RCU. Yeah. Deep, thank you. Bye, Dharma Deep. Okay. Thanks for all your you soon. job, yeah? Yep. Bye-bye. The APP team did a great job. We will pass official email to you. <laughs> yeah.